Good morning, everyone. I wonder if you've ever had to face a lawyer in your life. First time I ever faced a trained lawyer was at my immigration interview. I firsthand discovered what a terrible feeling it is to sit in front of the shrewd and clinical cross-examination of a sharp barrister. This intimidating man showed no sympathy and made sure that no stone was left unturned. He intensely peppered me with questions for hours. Now I find myself having deep sympathy for people who enter a witness box. Well, I think the best way to visualize the Gospel of John is to see it as a court case. The case of Christ is on the table, whether we can believe in Him or not. There are many witnesses present, and you and I are invited to give our verdict about the Lord Jesus Christ. So today I invite you to enter the courtroom with me. The case of Christ begins, and we hear from the first witness. John the Baptist, who gives a character reference about our Lord. Verse 6, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Before we get into his testimony about Jesus, we have established the credibility of the witness. So let me give you a little biography of this man, John the Baptist. Well, John the Baptist is unquestionably a giant of a man. He was one of the biggest crowd pullers of his time. He didn't have a pulpit in the center of the town near Federation Square. No, his pulpit was way out in the wilderness near Bendigo, somewhere else remote. And everyone flocked to him. In Mark 1, 5, we are told people went out to him from all of Jerusalem and the countryside of Judea. In Mark 1, 6, we are told his lifestyle proves and authenticates his message. He's dressed in camel hair and munches on locust sandwiches and wild honey. He is an authentic Elijah figure. But don't let his uh, eating habits throw you off. He is a man of fierceness. He is not afraid of anyone. His sermons don't begin with a funny story, but he calls people brood of vipers. He has no problem uh, confronting soldiers, authorities, religious leaders, and he tells them exactly what he thinks of them. No filters. He even called out King Herod for his immorality. And it's no wonder that he was uh, beheaded by Herod for this. He died for his word. That's why we can trust his testimony. So what is his testimony? Verse 19. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. Religious police are sent to interrogate him. They wonder, this huge crowd puller, who is he? Now let's listen to the witness, he's about to testify. But his testimony is a, a bit short and a bit disappointing, really. Verse 20, I'm not the Christ. Uh, are you Elijah? I'm not. Are you the prophet? No. If only all preachers could be so brief. Here John is presenting himself as insignificant, unattractive, because he is not interested in making a name for himself. No, but he is interested in pointing others to Jesus. But the investigators are not satisfied, so they press him and want to get something to report back to the hierarchy. Uh, so John responds, I baptize you with water, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He, here he says, look everybody, there is someone right here, and I am not fit to lace his boots. 
I'm not worthy to even be his slave. I'm not in his league. This is not about me. It's all about him. So here is John, this great leader, this great teacher, the prophet, uh, this preacher, the man with mighty ministry. He baptized thousands, but he's absolutely determined to get out of the way for another leader, for someone else. You know what his, his life motto is? John 3.30 is his life motto. He must become greater. I must become less. That is his life motto. More of him, less of me. He's determined to put the spotlight on Jesus. He's rightly obsessed with Jesus because Jesus is the true King, the true Lord. There is a story of a woman from uh, Sydney who left the church very crossly. And she said to one of her friends, and the news got back to the minister. She said uh, she left the church because the minister was obsessed with Jesus. <laughs> now that minister has been in ministry for 25 years, and he said that it was the greatest compliment that he has ever been paid. Oh, what a good reputation. Well, John the Baptist, who was obsessed with Jesus, he directs everyone to Jesus, not to himself. He gets out of the way. Now, did you notice that he says in verse 23, I am the voice. I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. And John says, I'm just the voice. The messenger, the message doesn't belong to me. I'm just the voice, making sure that there is a proper road ready for the royalty that is coming. Telling people, verse 23, make straight way for the Lord. I'm the road sweeper. I'm the road mender. That's all I am. Time and time again, John says, don't look at me. Look at Jesus. He's the real deal. Well, John the Baptist is the first witness in the witness box testifying who he is and who he is not. And he is a great example for us in our witness about Jesus. John has so much to teach us. You know, he asks us, he asks me this question, Jeremiah, are you absolutely determined to get out of the way for Christ? Are you directing people to yourself? Or to Jesus? Do you care enough about people to get out of the way? You see, in John's example, uh, despite his great success, he sets himself aside to spotlight Jesus. The best prayer I've ever heard before uh, the sermon is, Lord, blot out the preacher this morning so that people will see Jesus. Now, it's very hard for churches and people to keep Jesus in the spotlight because there is a great tendency in our hearts to get into the light ourselves. We long to be somebody. We long to be known, to be famous, to be noticed, to be recognized. Now, that human desire can consume us. Churches are destroyed when something else takes spotlight instead of Jesus. So often we talk about huge numbers or, or fine preachers or wonderful music or building projects or personal experiences. Now, they are all good things if they point to Jesus. But these things become abominations if they steal the spotlight from our Lord. You know, the thing is that the heart of Christianity is that men and women are saved from hell to eternal life through Christ by His wonderful, most precious cross. Everything hangs on who Jesus is and what He did for us on that cross. So we are not helping anyone unless we point them to that great rescuer who saves. Like John the Baptist, we have to say no to things. So uh, what is All Saints about? It's not about uh, ultimately about numbers. No, it's about Christ. It's not ultimately about music. No, it's about Christ. It's not ultimately about nice people. No, it's about Christ. It's not ultimately about community. No, it's about Christ. 
It's not about building programs. No, it's about Christ. It's not only about great youth and children programs. No, it's about Christ. He is the focus. Let's get everything else out of the way if it's coming in the way. But that's hard to do, isn't it? Because it's hard to even mention Jesus in our conversation sometimes. That's why we need help. We need to get alone with God in the morning and pray, Lord, help me. Help me to point away from myself and to you today. Help me to decrease so that you may increase. So the prayer is less of me, more of you. That is our prayer today, isn't it? Less of me, more of you, Jesus. Before the home group, before work, less of me, more of you. Before conversation with friends, less of me, more of you, Jesus. Before those who don't know Jesus, less of me, more of you, Christ. As we look to the needs of others, less of me and more of you. As we interact with our neighbors, less of me and more of you. As we talk to our family members, less of me, more of you, Jesus. How can I put Jesus at the front and myself at the back? How can I break self-obsession and be Christ-focused in every area of my life? Brothers and sisters, whatever your calling is in your life, whether you're called to be a grandparent or a graphic designer, stay-at-home mom or a sales assistant, engineer or early childhood teachers, nurse or news agent, like John, let us pray, less of me, more of you, Jesus. Let us point everyone to the, to the one who can save them. Less of me, more of you. Amen.